Today you will be drawing the Hoatzin bird. The Hoatzin is from South America and it grows to be 24 inches long. That's two feet. It's a bizarre bird that lives in trees, but it doesn't fly very well. It eats fruits and leaves and the young can swim and they have claws on the hook of each wing to help them climb up the tree. Their nests are built over water so they can drop to safety if a snake approaches. I will be guiding you through a step-by-step -step drawing of the Huatzin bird, but you can choose whatever colors you would like when it comes time to coloring it in. You don't have to make it look natural. Take a look at the feathers on top of its head and the big blue area around the red eye. Very interesting. Check out these white dots on the face of the bird. These white flecks are actually malophagia eggs, a type of bird lice that only the Hoatzin has. Gross, huh? Notice in this picture, the baby bird is holding onto the branch using the claws that come out of its wings. They can use these same claws to climb the tree if they fall out of the nest. Here are some student examples. These were done by second graders. They drew in pencil, outlined with black permanent marker, and then colored using chalk. And they rubbed the chalk in with tissue. If you don't have chalk at home, you could substitute for crayon, marker, or watercolor paints. In the art room, we have the book Draw Rainforest Animals, and we'll be using that to draw our Hoatzin bird. It takes us through a step-by-step -step drawing process. At home, you can just follow along with the drawings that I'm posting here. This is step one. Here I'm drawing my oval, slightly slanted. And the next step is a curved line for the head. Make sure that's a nice big curve. Step two, pause here or watch me. I'm going to start with the chest and the neck and the beak and connect it all as one shape. A line in the middle of the beak and an eye near the top of the head. Step three has quite a bit to add. Let's take it one step at a time. I will begin with the wing. I start with three curved lines and then add some long feathers that extend beyond the oval shape that I started with. Add more lines to the wing. And now let's take a really good look at that face. We're gonna put the feathers on the top of the head next. You can start all the feathers from the same spot. They're very loose and flowing backwards. Add another ring to your eye and a line on the beak. And then notice the feathers on the back of the neck have thin little oval shapes drawn on them. Add that same pattern to your neck. Let's go back to the wing now and add more detail to those feathers. I see a series of curved lines on his back. Those are feathers, but they look different than the wing. I'm gonna outline these feathers where the wing end and then come back with my eraser and erase that oval that I originally started with. That was just a guideline. Artists use guidelines to get them started, but they don't always show at the end. Look closely at those three lines that are going through the wing. By putting another line beside each one of the stripes we have so far, we'll be creating three stripes that we can color in on the bird's wing. Here I'm adding a few lines that I forgot on the wing. And it would be a good idea to add some texture to this fluffy chest feathers by doing a zigzag line. In the book, they shade in the top of the head around some of those oval shapes. So I'm gonna shade in with my pencil and leave some of those shapes white. You can do this too, or you can do it later with color. What am I forgetting? I think there's a ring under the eye, and I think I'll finish off the rest of the eyeball and the bottom portion of the beak. 
Now we need to add the tail. The tail is quite long. It's as long as the wing. The whole bird is two feet long, so he's got quite a long tail. Go straight down towards the bottom of the page with two long feathers, and they each loop around but touch each other. Both of those feathers are touching. I'll put a little tip at the end and a little shape inside each feather that looks like a teardrop shape. The Huatzin now needs a claw and a branch. The claw will be wrapping around the branch of a tree. I like to think of my claw as a crescent moon. Do you see it? Pointy on the ends, curvy in the middle. From each point, make a line, and that will become the branch that he is grabbing onto. This branch can go in any direction, off the bottom of the page or off the side of the page. It's attached to some tree that we don't totally see. Unless you want to draw the whole tree, that's fine too, if you have room. Continue that branch out the back side of the bird so it looks like it continues through his body and out the other side. We'll come back to add leaves to that in just a bit. Right now, I'm going to shade in a little bit of the face. You can do this later with color, but I notice there's a line under the eye and a little shadow on the chest that I want to color in with pencil before I forget. I'm adding several branches to my large branch. They get smaller and smaller as they get closer to the leaves. And then I just make my leaves look like a fluffy bush or a cloud that I'll come back later and put some leafy texture in. Let's add some more branches. On these branches, you could end up putting a snake wrapped around one or a nest with uh, baby Watsons in there or eggs. Lots of fun things you could add if you put a bunch of branches. Do you remember from earlier that most of these birds build their nests in the trees above water? Do you remember why? Well, they don't fly very well, so often they just have to jump out of their nest and fall to the ground. And it kind of hurts to fall to the ground if you land on a rock. So they like to land in the water because they're swimmers and they can swim back to shore and climb up the tree again. Well, it looks like you have successfully reached the end of part one of this video. Come back next week so we can talk about how we plan on coloring it all in. Have fun for now. See you next week. Welcome back to part two of the video. We've been working on a Hoatzin bird from South America. And so far, you should have drawn the entire thing in pencil with a simple scene behind it like water, trees, and leaves. You can add more things to your picture, though, if you want to include snakes, baby birds, a nest, or anything else that you can think of. Feel free to add that. Today, we're going to start off by outlining everything you've done in a black marker. It doesn't need to be a permanent marker unless you plan on watercolor painting your scene and then you'll want it to be permanent. Otherwise, just a very thin black marker will do. Outline the entire thing first, but then come back to what I'm doing. I'm adding texture. Texture is when we create the feeling of the bark by repeating lines repeatedly all over the tree until it looks like it's rough and bumpy. And we'll do that same effect with the leaves, but instead of making lines, we'll make little curves to look like leaf shapes. Simple, quick leaf shapes. So it looks like it's fluffy and leafy. You may need to use a very thin marker for this effect. Okay, it's time for the leafy texture now. Every one of those little bushy shapes is going to be filled in with individual leaves. Quickly drawn, they almost look like uh, little C's, the letter C or the letter U, to fill in the space, a curved line, a very curved line. And the 
sun. Okay, at this point, you have to decide how you are going to color yours in. In the classroom, we're going to be using chalk. But if you don't have chalk at home, which many of you won't, you could use colored pencils, watercolor paints, crayons, markers, whatever you do have. I'd love to see something new. Show me what you've got and color yours in with that. Or you could go try to buy some colored chalks from Michael's, our art supply store, and use them as I'm about to show you now. Chalk is different than crayon in that it needs to be rubbed in with a tissue. So you can use a tissue or toilet paper or cotton ball works fine too. And rub the chalk into the paper. So it's going to spread and get bigger every time you rub it in. So you never want to fill the whole picture in with chalk before you rub. You do a little at a time. Apply a little chalk, rub it in, see how big it gets. Put some more chalk on, rub it in, and let the colors blend together. I do see some red that I used on mine. Do you see that big red spot on mine? It didn't blend in as well as all the other colors did. So I'm going to need to go back with some more red and add more to that so that one spot doesn't stand out as a mistake. So if this happens to you, look what I'm doing. I'm just adding more red all across the top of the paper. And when I blend it all in, that one spot won't stand out as being the darkest area on the paper any longer. I'm picking out my warm colors. That's red, orange, yellow, and pink. And I'm going to use them to blend together a sunset sky. Those colors will blend very nicely and they won't turn into a dirty brown. Sometimes when you mix warm colors and cool colors, they'll blend into something you weren't expecting and you might not like the sky. Don't forget that little triangle space in the branches, that sky that you're seeing in there. When your tissue gets too colored, you can always open it, flip it over, and find a clean white spot on the other side, and then blend with that. Now using chalk, I'm going to look for two different greens. One green I will use for the land in the background behind the water, and the other green I will use for my leaves on the tree. So they'll show up better if it's not the same green. Look how pretty it looks when you blend it in. It should look soft and smooth. Even that dark green, once it's blended in, you're going to be able to see through it and notice all the textured leaf marks that were drawn earlier. That's why we did that. They show up right through the chalk. That's true with the water too. I'll apply a little bit of blue water. Notice I'm not coloring in the entire water area with blue. If I did, that would get blue chalk all over my bird's tail and the tree and my arm and the table. Just a little goes a long way. And I can see through the blue at all those wavy water lines that I put in there with a the black marker earlier. I love that. Now I'm coming back with a brown piece of chalk and I will go over my tree being very careful to stay inside the lines of those thin branches. I'm going to take my tissue and wrap it around one finger and control where that tissue is so I spread the brown inside the tree without getting any brown chalk in the water or the land or the bird. Be careful. If you do make a mistake, you can erase chalk a little bit. Now use whatever colors you want to fill in the Watson bird. You can look at the pictures from the beginning of this video and try to match the colors and make it natural and realistic, or you can make yours very colorful and different and creative. Hold the phone, take a look at what happened here. Uh-oh, when I tried rubbing in that black chalk with my tissue, it smeared all over the place and got outside the lines. And here too, in the feathers around the head, I don't like how it looks. So remember when I said you can sometimes erase chalk? I'm taking the eraser at the end of my pencil and just going over the parts that I do not like. 
This works best if you've already rubbed the chalk in and now I'm just getting off some of the extra dark places I'm not happy with. Now I'm filling in with some yellow to fill in the sky back again where I have the erasure marks. Once you erase it, it kind of turns white. You've got to put the sky back in. So use an eraser if you make any major mistakes. Ta-da! Here is my finished Hawatsun masterpiece. Please share a picture of yours with me as soon as you're finished.